Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, we are talking hmm, about logistics. Abi, we are talking about supply chain, which one? And we're taking a look at the supply chain business in Africa. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 and, and I'm loving the way Nkiru is just explaining the thing. For people like us that do not know jack about it. <laughs> but you know, somebody just asked a question. Now, what is the biggest challenge you can identify in moving goods from point A, right, from one point to another, both locally and internationally. I want to focus on internationally more. Is it easier, because you, you touched on Kenya and um, Uganda. Uganda. Is it easier to move goods, right, to other parts of Africa, you know, than, you know, bringing in goods to Nigeria from other parts of... How easy is it for the Nigerian market compared to other African countries? Compared to other African countries. Uh, that's a fantastic question. Um, to be honest... Um, I think moving goods in Nigeria compared to other African countries, it's a lot more challenging. Um, and that's also because there seems to be a lot of you know, regulatory bodies around the activity that is uh, logistics and transportation mm. um, that really don't understand um, the challenges that the players face and how they are supposed to play a role in resolving some of these challenges. Um, and I'll give an example. You have um, one of the major challenges with uh, shipping in goods to Nigeria is the congestion that is experienced at the port. Um, so the congestion is in two ways. It's either within the port itself or with access to the port. Mm. The fantastic thing that we've seen is that um, the government has introduced a system that basically... The system. Exactly. <laughs> That's <easy> working. <laughs> The system has collapsed. It's collapsed. Is it working? So, Wait, let that finish. No, it's collapsed. It's not Wait. like is it working. <laughs> the government, it has collapsed. Wait, uh, let that finish. Are you in the logistics business? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Nikiru. So I think it was officially launched um, uh, early this month. And, and so far, <laughs> well, I, I mean, so far, we've seen, to be honest, we've seen an improvement with access to the port for trucks, mm -hmm. where there are no longer trucks that are just lined up on the, on the Apapa Expressway. And um, if you actually are supposed to load inside the port, you are required to have certain procedures and documents in place before you are granted access. Mm. Um, of course, with every new process, there's the painful teething uh, period. period. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far, we've seen a huge improvement with access into the port. And we're just ensuring that, you know, the right people that have done the right things are actually given free way to go in, load their containers, and mm. come back mm. out. Um, so it's just little glitches like this, you know, that sort of like make it difficult or make importing and transporting your cargo within Nigeria difficult. Mm. You can have an issue where your driver is moving from Ikeja to Ilupeju, and for some reason, last mass says that he's not packed <laughs> properly. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, hmm. he clamps the truck mm -hmm. with no proof as to this truck was not packed properly. And you know, that alone hinders the time, turnaround the time, delivery time for delivery. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, while all these you know, nuances exist in Nigerian markets, what we find is that for other African markets, they are really not there. I think they are more concerned with how can we make this work and make business easy you know compared to uh, okay Nigeria. um as a follow-up to the question we're talking um your question i'm sorry your answer about the port and all that do you think we need new ports to ease all of these troubles um i don't think we need new ports i think what we need to do is leverage the capacity of existing ports um ports do we ghana have? for instance mm -hmm. yes i watched a documentary on their ports mm -hmm. and i was blown away can't we leverage and partner with Ghana, for instance, to say, you know what, let us... Do a is, is that, transfer, I think, yeah, that's what I'm understand. thinking you were saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that as well, where if, you, if it's a case of we need the capacity to improve hmm. operations within you know, our existing ports, then let's do that. If it's a case of you need to revamp existing ports, then let's do that. You have a port in Worry, you have a port in yes, Port Harcourt. Yes, that's what I was saying. You have, you, have, you have about seven ports in... Um, in Lagos alone, and you have a lot of off-dock hmm. terminals as well. Um, but I think it's also the case of people are used to the Lagos port, so most traffic comes into 
um, Lagos are supposed to put But I think what we're seeing now is uh, most uh, shipping lines and clients are moving their cargo out of Lagos to Port Harcourt. Mm. And we're hoping that um, we can see something around Calabar. But what about well. insecurity? Has it been also a challenge, uh, challenge for you in the business? Insecurity, um, kidnapping, bribery. Um, is it, bribery is not I'm funny. sorry. <laughs> 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 bribery is another ball game entirely. <laughs> kidnapping, um, armed robbery, and all that. How has that been? Um, it has it hasn't really been a challenge for us in our business um, and that's because we are as much as we're very execution focused we are also um, what, what I would call keen on details so part of the things that we do is in the, in the case of Ambrobi where you have diversion of goods um, we have a department a safety and uh, security department that is tasked with things like, first of all, before you even onboard a partner on the Cobalt 360 platform, there are a number of rigorous vetting processes that, that you would go through, right? So things like this help to checkmate, um, you know, no, the I high risk of... I don't mean the uh, diverting the goods. Okay. I mean actually exposing them to armed robbery and all that. Okay, yeah. no. So, so thankfully... Um, we haven't experienced uh, that. The impact of insecurity. Yeah. I was going to ask really? you, yeah. to what extent do you think um, logistics can aid international trade? For instance, now we have, I mean, the government is preaching farming, they're preaching all of these things, and people are actually going into that, that, um, that space, yeah. right? What do you think, how do you think, if you were going to paint a picture, what it should look like that would aid the economy, you know, and aid international um, trade? How would you paint that picture for the government to be, I mean, for them to be watching to see, okay, you know what, this thing can actually be a very big cash cow for the country? I think for one, it's, um, so I would say two things. The first one is we need to move away from being an import-driven. Dependent country. Exactly, import-dependent uh, country. Um, there needs to be more emphasis on producing Local. and manufacturing locally. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. The second is that um, there is a big opportunity for exports um, for Africa as a whole. Not let, I mean, we'll start with Nigeria, but I mean for Africa as a whole that has not been tapped that's into. Um, I, I was speaking to someone and I hear that, you know, the soya beans from Nigeria is really sought after. Very the cashew rich. nuts is really sought after. Mm -hmm. So there should be um, a lot of push to move from an import dependent, dependent to, to export. export. Mm. And there are so many ways you can do that. Like you said, there, there are initiatives to um, empower farmers and drive agriculture mm -hmm. as a sustainable um, driver of the economy. Mm. Once all that is done, what happens to the proceeds from each of these farms? Mm. Is there access to markets, specifically access to international markets um, for these farmers that we are, um, um, what do they call this thing, that we are empowering, mm. right? Um, and, even, and what about storage for them? Exactly, and even the storage, because that's also part of the problem where you produce all these, you have all these, these large yields, mm. and there's no way In fact, to store so it. It's good you mentioned that, because I just got a question. Someone says, most tomatoes that come from the north are tied on petroleum drops. <laughs> <laughs> do they have... Um, a solution for this. How much are their solutions on agricultural products, bearing in mind they are perishable, they are the perishable nature? Mm -hmm. That's from Benson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, interestingly enough, to answer Benson's question, um, s about 60 to 60% 60 of the volume of goods moved on the Cobalt 360 platform are actually agricultural commodities hmm. that come from the north to factories in uh, the south and southwest, or they come from the north to the ports for export. Mm. Um, the, in terms of perishable items, there is an initiative that we're driving with one of our investors, IFC, where we're trying to bring in assets that can actually convey, okay. um, yes, that can convey um, perishable items from mm. one point to the other while preserving them Perfect. at the same time. So these uh, are the things we be that clapping we're looking at. For 360. <laughs> I was going to ask you that, what would be the big picture, but that would be my final question. But production is said to be complete when the goods reach the final consumer. Mm -hmm. But here we are helping other serious countries to complete their supply chain. That's from Rafael Akori. He's joined um, in from Zaria. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? 
that we're helping other countries to do. <laughs> to complete their supply chain. <laughs> I that don't understand it. says production is supposed to be, is said to be complete when the goods reach the final consumer. Yeah. Right? It now says, but here we are helping other serious countries. <laughs> like we are on serious. <laughs> we're helping other serious com countries to complete their supply chain. That's Rafael Akori from Zaria. Do you agree with that? Um, I mean, I can understand your sentiment, but I wouldn't quite say that I agree. Um, I think we, as much as we support logistics for other countries, I think we are doing, um, as a nation, we're doing a good job of ensuring that logistics is done efficiently, mm. you know, to an extent, particularly in COP360, right? Mm. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that we leave our home to focus on our neighbor's home. Okay, so this person that. sends a picture. It says MPA suspends ports receipts at um, Lagos ports. The Nigerian Port Authority on Monday announced the suspension of the export receipt mm -hmm. at Lagos ports mm -hmm. for two weeks. That how would this impact? What, I mean, what would, um, how do they overcome this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the, I'm sure you're aware of that. Yes, I am. Very, very much so. It was a bit of a shock as well when we saw that. And I think our solution to that was to tell our clients that instead of bringing your goods down to Lagos, just take them to One hmm. and you can export it wow. out from there. That's the solution. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Okay, well, so what, 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 what would have informed such a policy? Um, I think for, if, if I was to take a, a calculated guess, um, perhaps there's, there's more of a focus on rem clearing out vessels that have come in and, you know, are carrying import containers and just clearing them out before you start bringing in exports. Mm. you know, for those vessels to take out. So I think that could wait, likely be the logic. Wait, there. is this not lopsided? Thank you. Which one are we supposed to give priority? <laughs> you, see why Ra you see why Rafael said we are not a serious country? <laughs> Do you understand? Which one are we, were we supposed to give priority to? Yeah. Is it not the one that is leaving the shores yeah, of our country? Exactly, ah, exactly. No, 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 and that's no, no, back no. to the conversation Kiro, I'm of... not happy. <laughs> so change, change in government policies also affects yeah, your yeah. business. It, no, definitely. Okay, let Erratic me take change. change. Another fine, uh, comment says many MSMEs still struggle to distribute their products with the wave of online orders. How easy is it for MSMEs to enjoy Cobo 360 okay. services? Um, so to answer that, I think first of all, I can state that uh, for Cobo 360, our partner network consists of over 80,000 80, trucks assets of various types, whether it's a flatbed asset, the 30 ton asset, whether it's smaller size assets, mm -hmm. we have aggregated a large number of assets in Sorry, our network. Sorry, when you mean assets, you mean the trucks? Yes, the trucks. Okay. A large number of assets in our network. Um, it's literally as simple as you register on the platform, um, on our website, you create a customer account, you place an order. Mm. When you place an order, um, our technology matches that order to a trucker that is within close proximity to, to where you. your loading point mm -hmm. is. Um, and what we try to do is we try to keep that to a time frame of about uh, 10 hours for which the matching is done mm -hmm. up until when, and then another 12 hours up until when the truck actually arrives your facility yeah. to load. And mm -hmm. while all that is going on, you have visibility on, first of all, how much is this going to cost? me to move my cargo from one point to the other. Second of all, visibility on your asset as to when it is supposed to arrive. Mm. When it eventually arrives and loads, you have visibility of the truck throughout its journey up until it arrives your offloading location, mm. right? Um, so yeah, it's literally that That's simple. simple. So what's your reach within Nigeria? We service all 36 states Fantastic. of Nigeria. We also, like I said, we're also present in uh, six other African countries mm. as well. Um, and we're looking to expand to other African countries before the end of the year. I mean, do you have a question? Because I ha wanted to ask that what would be the big picture for Cobo 360? Okay. You know, what, what, what are you guys looking at, for, for, uh, first of all, for, for the Nigerian market and for the African market? Mm -hmm. um, so what we've seen is technology has the ability to curb a lot of inefficiencies. Um, so the big picture for Cobalt 360 is to build out what we call a global logistics operating system that basically provides a single platform for an organization, a company or an individual to manage its entire supply chain. Mm. So we started off with aggregating um, transporters, um, truckers, and you know, handling transportation. 
we want to then expand to different buckets of the supply chain, whether it's aggregating warehousing, warehouses and providing warehousing as a service to our clients, um, whether it is uh, aggregating um, value-added services and providing value-added services not just to our clients, but even to the transporters um, in our ecosystem. Mm. Um, so that is really the big picture. So by value-added services, is, is manufacturers, um, are you going to have a pool of manufacturers? You say, okay, these are raw materials in case you want to source. Because for supply chain, it starts from the raw material all the way to the end user. Yes. So are you thinking of getting those aggregates as well? Yeah, so value-added services mm. could be sourcing, mm -hmm. it could be clearing and forwarding as a service as mm. well. Um, and then for value-added services specifically to our transporters on our network, it's aggregating services providers, people that sell tires, people that sell mm. diesel, and then matching them to Absolutely. our transporters. So basically building and digitizing an ecosystem for supply chain across Africa. Mm. Fantastic. You didn't tell us what you do. <laughs> 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 After we finish, let us just hear two minutes, like what's your day like, you know, at Cobo 360? Um, so I think, uh, so like you mentioned, I'm the head of uh, Eastern Operations mm -hmm. um, for the Nigerian um, business. Uh, my day-to-day -day basically entails just ensuring that my clients are happy and expanding the network of clients that we have in that region. So that is all of the East, including... Uh, River State, so Port Harcourt, Calabar, as well as uh, Akwaibom. And basically managing a team of exceptional individuals to ensure that, you know, we're delivering on our targets for the company. Hmm. I can see the future already. <laughs> it's looking good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Inkira. I think we had a lot of fun with you today. I learned a lot about uh, supply chain because, uh, you know, before, I, before the show started, I was completely... <laughs> You know, but we are farmers, so don't worry, we'll be contacting <laughs> your services. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for a fantastic conversation. Thank you, Lamy. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Supply chain are in every organization. Even the corner store has a supply chain. They just might not know it yet. We'll see you live on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.